Whatever you're wearing right now, Mack Weldon is better. Mack Weldon is a men's essentials brand that believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. They even have a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, which means they eliminate odor. They want you to be comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it, and Mack Weldon will still refund you, no questions asked. Go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off using promo code PFT. That's MacWeldon.com, offer code PFT. Mm. Great start. Solid. Music comes in. Uh, you know you're in for a professional show. <laughs> a lot of shows just start with talking. Anyone can do that. You do that in life. <sighs> Music happening underneath your talking is something that only occurs in fake situations. This is one of the many ways you can tell if you're in a Truman Show scenario. Although I think they put the music in in post in the the TV show that was Truman's life. I don't think they adequately explored the trauma that somebody would experience if they found out their entire life had been recorded for a TV show. I mean, I guess it's a longer movie where he's like, he's annoyed about it and tries to escape (laughs) rather than just suffering a complete psychotic break, which is what would happen. How about that movie, The Game? Where Michael Douglas is being, you know, put in all these different scenarios. And it's called The Game. And so I can't remember in the movie if he's aware that it's a game at any point during what's happening. Or if he finds out at the... He can't just find out at the end. There must be a point where he thinks it's a game and then it's... It's still the game, but he thinks the game is over and then other crazy shit starts to happen to him. But then why wouldn't he just assume? (laughs) Like at the point where he's buried alive in Mexico or whatever. (laughs) At that point, is he still saying, this isn't the game, this is something else. (laughs) I can't remember. All I know is, if you want to experience the same unsettling feeling that you might have if you're in a the game. Go to Angel Stadium in Anaheim and see a baseball game there because there's something that's very weird about that stadium. It's unsettling and you get the sense that these people could all be hired actors. And they got the professional, two professional sports teams in on the game. At the end of this game, will I fall off a great height into a big air mattress? And then Sean Penn will hug me? God, I hope not. I want to talk to you about this rally monkey. Okay. At, at Angel Stadium, it's where the Los Angeles Angels at Anaheim play. Great name, by the way, guys. They have this thing called the Rally Monkey. Now, this was explained to me the first time I went down to to see a game in that stadium. My friend Julie was explaining, oh, you'll probably get to see the Rally Monkey. And I said, I beg your pardon. (laughs) She said, yeah, if the team is behind, they'll bring out the Rally Monkey and everybody goes crazy. And I was like, oh, okay. Then I get to the stadium And they have all this, it's a weird stadium, guys. It's, they have this weird, like, almost Hawaiian scene, like at the, at the, (laughs) I think it's in left field. There's this sort of, it almost looks like a fake volcano with like a grotto and there's like a little waterfall and everything. What does that have to do with anything? I don't know what it had to do with angels or Anaheim. 
And then at one point, surely, the angels were behind. And then on the big screen, there's the rally monkey. And this monkey is jumping up and down. And then there would be like a close-up of the monkey screaming like monkeys love to do. And I'm looking over at this, you know, fake volcano. I'm like, well, that's where the rally monkey is. He's, I'm, I'm looking for him jumping up and down, right? And it's like, it's a, it's a real monkey. It's a little monkey, right? And I'm like, oh, that's their little mascot. <laughs> Again, nothing to do, nothing to do with anything. What do monkeys have to do with angels or Anaheim? Or, or Los Angeles for that matter. So I'm looking and I can't find the rally monkey in his habitat. Then my friend Julian informs me, oh, no, no, no. The monkey's not here. It's just videotape. That's all it is. That's like, okay. So the rally monkey is footage of this surely decades dead monkey. And that's supposed to get everyone fired up. <laughs> Come on, guys, we can do this. Sh show that footage <laughs> of that dead animal <laughs> when it was alive and angry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneity Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program. To join me in a free-form conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then, I invite some improviser pals, if they're not already here, to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes, oftentimes utilizing details gleaned from the conversation with the aforementioned special guest. And it is all scored on piano. By Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. That seemed familiar, but I couldn't place it. Give me, give me a little baseball organ. There we go. That's a good one. Take me out to the ball game, of course. What else you got? Oh, we will rock you. <laughs> what about I? One of the ones I love is dent, 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 dent. That one. You're making it sound a little, a little cooler than it actually sounds. <laughs> it's still yeah. One time I was watching a game on TV. I'll get to you in a second. One time I was watching a game on TV. Uh, it was the San Francisco Giants playing a team that was not the Los Angeles Dodgers. That is an important detail to the story because at one point they did that tune. Dun, 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 dun. Do it and I'll show you what happened. Oh, and then it goes. Dun, dun, dun. That's how it ends. Right. <laughs> and then the crowd yells out. Okay, let's do it for the beginning. Let's... <laughs> So I'll be in this. I'll be playing the part of the of the uh, the San Francisco Giants fans in the stands. Okay, at Giant Stadium in San Francisco, and so this thing comes up. Dodgers suck. What? The Dodgers aren't even here. I don't think they're even in Los Angeles at that point. They're on the other side of the country. What's wrong with you, San Francisco? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to welcome this fella back to the show. For, he's, he's improvised on the show many times. This is his first time as my interview guest. He is my dear friend from Bajillion Dollar Properties. And of course, you can hear him on Teacher's Lounge. That's a Stitcher Premium Show, guys. Behind the paywall, worth every penny. And he's got a new project coming up. We're, we'll get to that. Drew Tarver is here. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Drew, thank you for being here. 
I am so happy. How are you doing? You're I'm happy. Do, I'm, ve- I'm very happy. You're in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. I caught myself the other day at my house whistling, and I was like, <laughs> what's going on? I was like, is that, oh my, I think I'm happy. But I, I feel like you're, you're, you're a pretty happy-go-lucky guy to begin with. I'm pretty happy. I just hadn't had it uh, manifest itself <laughs> at home by myself. You right. know, I can just get into my home mood, which is sure. just kind of like, you know, one wandering around. <laughs> I lost, you know, <laughs> lost, around. lost in my uh, my huge uh, furnitureless mansion. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now you people have tried to buy you furniture, and you've said no. That is true. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, nope. Yeah. Uh, how can I be this weird guy if I have furniture in here and host? <laughs> yeah. No, I have to be this guy who has this mansion with no furniture. Yeah. Well, I have like one bed way deep in the back of the mansion. Of course. <laughs> and that's just a mattress on the floor. Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, with just a top sheet. <laughs> no like fitted sheet. <laughs> that's just sleeping on those buttons. Yeah. <laughs> Do they still make mattresses like that anymore? Uh, I, 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 I don't, I'm trying to think of my mattress right now. Yeah. And I have one, I swear. Uh, <laughs> and I don't, I know it has a lot of, um, occasionally like once every six months I have to like get, uh, my roommate's cat scratcher and scratch the little beads off of it. You know, those, the maybe little, I like don't have pills up. Yeah. Like, yeah, p- yeah pills. Yeah, that's yeah. what, yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think if it has the little buttons. Are you sleeping on a big sweater? <laughs> Cause then it does have buttons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're sleeping well, on a big cardigan. Yeah. I got this super soft cardigan. <laughs> And it's really good. It's really, um, my back hurts a lot, but um, the lady at J. Crew said I could sleep on it. <laughs> did she offer that or did you ask? I was, I said, I said, while I'm here, can I get everything for my house? And she was like, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I drive an old red wing shoe. You know? <laughs> Just no, all the household furniture. No, no, no. But so, everything, everything, even that's something that parks near the house. Yeah, is, everything is Jake for your Crew. life. Anything yeah. in any way it, near the house. Yeah, anything you you name, I will name a J. Crew specific. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, I have a question for you. Okay, this comes to us from our previous episode's guest, and that question is: What's the very, very happiest memory you have from childhood? Uh, Hold on. Okay. And there's an X and an O and a heart. Okay. Well, I love you too. So you know where that person's coming from. <laughs> yeah. That's flirty. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, I have – my immediate first thought was something that's captured on film. Oh, that's great. And this feels gross, though, because it's me receiving a gift. <laughs> right. So it's not like – Oh, when my when my parents saw me do this thing or when right. I watched this thing happen, then my sisters did it, you know, <laughs> like it's not <laughs> it's me when I was maybe nine years old getting a Lego train. Like I wanted this Lego train for a long time. Um I was obsessed with Legos. I had a, a Lego um a world underneath mm-hmm. my bed that you could pull out. It was like made on a very shitty table that would go like, <laughs> like and had bad wheels on it. It Does was a homemade co- table. No, oh, homemade okay. table. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably made by my dad sure. in the backyard uh, very confidently with no skills, uh, no hardware skills. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> and it like had like a felt, you know, like grass on it and like a river. And a majority of my Lego- Sounds incredible. It was unbelievable. I have a photo of me and my cousin Trent, who was like my co-builder, um, <laughs> like, s- like standing above our Lego table because it was kind of ours just with our arms crossed. Look, it, And we, we aren't smiling. We're like, yeah. Yeah, this is our Lego city. Like, we're so... Oh, you are... We're okay. cocky. I thought it was maybe like you were planning things. Like, you were no. looking at, like, city planners no, no, no. with this a is model. Like, we're done. <laughs> we have we cut the it. ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> Here's our fucking Lego town, and we are badasses. Like, oh. um, so I wanted a train. It was a majority of marine. I was obsessed with, like, boats and stuff, so uh-huh. it definitely was, like, it all... Uh, the, the city's main hub was the marina, um, 
I mean, this is where most people, this is what drew people to town. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that place where you take boats out? Yeah. Yeah. That's where we need to be. People loved it. And I'm sure the, like you had a little souvenir shop. Oh, you absolutely. Built out absolutely. Of Lego. Yeah. 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 And there was just like a little bad restaurant. <laughs> That everybody's like, why do we come here for our anniversaries? The food is terrible, and this dock is honestly stinks. Good view? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, like, it was based on growing up in Georgia, like, the the views are, um, you, you don't have a ton of beachside property in Georgia because, like, <laughs> let me get into the Georgia <laughs> river system here. People will love this. You know, because all of the islands are owned by the state, so you can't right. build on that. So a majority of the like okay. hangout area are on these like rivers that are further back behind the islands. Right. So it's a lot and like the tide is the tide goes, you know, ten feet up and down. So it depends on when you're there. If you're there at low tide, mm -hmm. it stinks like sulfur and you can't really see over the marsh. Right. <laughs> At these restaurants. Anyway, this is way off from Lego Train. I wanted a train for my Marine Town, and uh, sure, yeah, sure, because we got to get we got to get those boats and trains right next to each other That's in this right. town. Yeah, um, and I got it, and I lose my mind in this video. Like I am in pajamas and i'm just screaming in the garage is it christmas like, your birthday it's christmas yeah it's okay. christmas and um they like walk me out to the they walk me out to the garage and it's in the garage and i'm like what like i am and it's real but i'm also hamming it up for the camera and i'm sure. like i'm like delivering it to the camera you got it you got it for me like i'm losing my mind, like I'm kind of walking, <laughs> I'm kind of walking around cars and like right. revealing myself in a new state of insanity. How long does this video it go on? It goes on, like it's a solid two and a half minute <laughs> celebration of like flailing nine year old lunatic with a bowl cut. <laughs> It like it goes it goes so long that I think my nana just goes, okay, like ninety seconds in and goes back inside. Like right. I think she's like, okay, he's he, I've seen enough. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like kind of a that's maybe like a selfish uh um uh best moment of my childhood because it's me receiving a gift. But, well, it, but I do remember it being like big. Of course. And now how much of that do you think is is aided by the fact that there's video of it. So oh, like absolutely. The, so the memory is like I don't think I would ha I would know I would remember it. Yeah. But my memory of it is basically now watching the video. Yes. But I do remember being very excited. But watching the video, I'm like, oh yeah, I I do remember the lead up to that. <laughs> Also, there was, I didn't at the time, I grew up kind of religious and I like, I knew bad words and stuff, but I wanted a, th this has to do with the train because the train to me wasn't as fun as boats. So right. the train almost had like an evil undertone to it. Like, <laughs> I don't know why, but the conductor of the train became the villain of the town mm -hmm. at one point. He's and, jealous of those boats. Yeah, yeah. And he's very jealous of the, the boat because the trains are on a track. Yeah, the yeah, boats yeah, can yeah. go any which way. Yeah. Um, so I there was a there was a Lego man with like a little bit of scruff, <laughs> and I was like, okay, he's gonna be the bad guy. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know exactly what to call him, but I want it to be maybe a a, a bad word. So his name was Vagina. <laughs> I knew, I knew that was something that was not supposed. I knew it was the opposite of a penis, right? Um, and I knew it wasn't like something that we were supposed to. <laughs> Is it the opposite I of a mean, penis? I guess. <laughs> Are they the I same? Never, I never Are thought, they both reproductive I never organs? Thought about it that way. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're the opposite. It's they an opposite. Different, of, they have different <laughs> functions. Yeah. They overlap very in a very <laughs> they, slight way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh I, I just remember God. I don't remember how vagina like played. 
Was it? Uh, was it, it, it? That was his full name. Was vagina. vagina. <laughs> I don't remember how vagina, like how it all played out, and how he terrorized the town. But I do remember going to <laughs> my <laughs> the town. But I do remember going to my grandma's house next door, and just like shortly after, you know, vagina was a person, and kind of being like, "Hey, grandma," and, and she was like, "Hey," and I was like, and I had him with me, and I sure. was like. Uh, this is the villain of the town. And she was like, oh. And I was like, his name's Vagina. <laughs> and I just kind of remember her just kind of giving me this insane look. And I had no idea. I guess I knew. But I didn't know how weird that – Um, it, I thought it was going to – like, this is shit, man. Well, you know, you're, like, this you're is, so used to it, too. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That you forget – and yeah. especially as a kid, you're not, you're not thinking – Oh, how is somebody else going to react to this? Yeah, yeah. This very private thing <laughs> yeah. that I've been, you know, I've been living with for all this time. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it was very, very strange. No, was this the same Nana that uh, got the point of the celebration early and, and cut No, out? different Nana. Oh, different, Di different Nana. <laughs> different Nana. Well, I might, uh, I have, a, I had a, I have a Nana um, who's passed away and then a, a grandmother. Okay. And what, she. Did you, what was she called? Grandmother was called grandmother. Wow. Yes, because she kind of realized or she noticed that Southern uh, grandmas especially, and sometimes grandpas, Southern, southern grandpas, uh, <laughs> they, um, they end up, their names uh, sometimes come from just like mispronunciations yes, or absolutely. like, or like even, not Southern everybody, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But a lot of Southern grandmas are named like Bam All and like <laughs> <Yeah>. Jaw Jaw, <laughs> you know. And she was like, I refuse to be stuck with a Bebop, you know, name. <laughs> so I'm going to, from early on, be like, my name is Grandmother, the most And I'm fanciest. here to say. <laughs> <laughs> you will now pronounce it any other way. <laughs> Yeah, she was a she was a cool like uh, late eighties rapper too. My name is grandmother. Grandmother. Yeah, she was like so. I I've Fucking always good for her. I know I've grown up. She's she is uh, my one remaining us. grandparent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And she is. I've always called her grandmother. My whole family, my cousins, we all call her grandmother. Never felt weird uh, of course, to yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like. I, I don't bring up my grandmother a ton, mm -hmm. but I do. I started actually bringing her up more and more into my late twenties, just because like you don't. Talk, I don't know. You just don't talk about your grandparents as much. But mm -hmm. then I was like, sort of ruminating about my childhood, <laughs> and then I said like, yeah, you know. Then we went over to grandmothers, and people would be like, you went where? And I'd be like, grandmothers. We went to grandmothers. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, that is so fancy. And I was like, oh, I'm. That's just now becoming weird to yeah, me that it's yeah, yeah, a yeah. grandmother. Absolutely. I sound crazy, <laughs> but where it's I, it doesn't sound weird to me. Of course not. So it makes me want to like name myself something like super crazy to get my or not crazy. I guess Bama is crazy. I don't know. Call yourself Bama. <laughs> I'll, I'll All help. Right, kids, I'm not dad. I'm Bama. <laughs> <laughs> my my uh, my wife's uh, uh, mother and stepfather, when they became grandparents, uh -huh. they just used their first names. Oh, okay. Which was I don't know. I mean, that's it's a little disappointing. Yeah, because that's like that's a thing that that's a a thing that you get to. Decide, yeah, you know? yeah. Because my when my mother became a grandmother, she said, "This is what I want to be called," right? You know? And so they and everyone went along with it, yeah. And then, um, you know, they just went by their first names. Yeah, that's weird to be like, oh, I'm going to go to Jeff's yeah, house to hear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and to hear like grandma. to hear little kids address them by their first names. It's like yeah. ah, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah. But my mother, when she was in her, I want to say like in her sixties. She told me and my siblings, I have decided that if you want to, you may call me Jenny. <laughs> and we're like, uh, oh, okay. We hadn't been dying to do it, you know. Yeah. But then it just started, it felt very, it made sense yeah. because we were all adults now. And it was like, yeah, this is okay. Yeah. So sometimes we'd call her by her first name. Sometimes we'd call her mom. Yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, it was it was. And really, her first name was Jenny. No, it was... <laughs> I saw Forrest Gump, and I've decided. 
<laughs> it was Bebop. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, we have to take a break. Okay. We're going to talk with you some more when we come back. Folks, listen to the ad. Hey, I know that it's been a long time and maybe you gave up on this happening, but I have good news if you want to hear it. Just, just, I want you to treat this like there's no statute of limitations on something you wanted to happen, even if it didn't happen when you wanted it to happen. It's happening later, but it's still happening. Okay? All right. Comedian Michael Ian Black is finally back here on Earwolf. There. Are you happy? This time he's got a new podcast called Obscure. In Obscure, Mib. Michael Ian Black, tackles a great work of literature he's never read, and you probably haven't either. He's reading one of the most well-respected books ever written, Jude the Obscure. He's going to read it out loud, and he's going to comment as he goes, even though he didn't really want to. Backstory. The book has been on his bookshelf for years, mocking him. You know what that's like. Maybe maybe you do, maybe you don't. I know what it's like. I'm very smart. I have some book that's supposed to be, you know, a classic, and it's just sitting up there to impress other people, make them think that I know how to read. Yeah, that's right. I'm very smart, but I'm illiterate. You can be both. Get you a man who can do both. That's me. I'm already spoken for. Sorry. Anyway, he's finally going to read this goddamn book for you. And he's got a lot of thoughts to share along the way. Join Michael Ian Black, some of his famous and non-famous friends, and experts. I don't know how famous or non-famous they are. You'll have to listen to find out. As Michael discovers Jude's world and a few things about his own. Is it a terrible idea? Probably. But it's a terrible idea he wants to do with you. Hmm. Subscribe to Obscure now in Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen. Oh, yeah. Folks, we're back here with Drew Tarver. He is my sole guest and improviser today. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Drew, tell me about this television program that you're working on now. Yes. So I am about to move to New York. That's right. New York City, greatest city in the world. Greatest city in the world. Um, <laughs> it's like the Venturian candidate. Yeah. <laughs> greatest, there's no greatest city in the world no, in New York. Nothing, unbelievable. Um, <laughs> unbelievable. I'm going to stay if I can. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, it is a uh, Comedy Central show right now called The Other Two. Mm -hmm. um, that might change. I mean, I, it's... it. it I it, think it's a good name. I think it's a great name. It was, it was called um, Chase Life. No. No. Based on one of the characters in the show, uh, who is like a Justin Bieber type who went by Chase Life. And he right. was like, yeah, you know, you just got to chase life. Like that was his like <laughs> thing he got famous for. Right. Um, so uh, it, it is about two loser older siblings of a Justin Bieber type who mm -hmm. like skyrockets to fame. Um, and I play the loser older brother. <laughs> <laughs> who is your who is your co-star in this? Um, Helena York, mm -hmm. who is a great uh, New York actress, um, New York greatest city in the world. In the Peppermint Patty Harris. Uh, uh, yes, um, and uh, Ken Marino. Sure, uh, is he in doesn't it. play the, the he does not year old he does not. I was gonna say <laughs> that would be very funny. <laughs> Just an obvious middle-aged man yeah, yeah, yeah. pretending to be Justin Bieber. We never call it out. <laughs> <clears throat> he's funny. He's funny. Just let, just let it. We do say he's funny. Just let him do it within the dialogue of the show. <laughs> we sort of justify it. We wink to the audience like, it's funny. Sure. Just shut up. It's funny. Sure. <laughs> um, Molly Shannon plays oh, my mom. The best. Unbelievable. The best. The best. Absolute best. I did a pilot with her one time, and it was just an absolute joy to work with her, and to to just to talk with her between 
scenes. It was just like she's, she doesn't, what, uh, it was an amazing thing because Molly Shannon does not do like boring small talk. And right. Then, and look, there's nothing wrong with small talk. No. Like it's it's like a lot of times it's how you ease into a conversation about larger things or mm-hmm. whatever or a more interesting conversation. But she will ask you questions that are personal, but they're not intrusive. You know what I mean? Yes. It's hard to describe, isn't yes, it? Absolutely, but it's like yeah. you're right away you're talking about real things. Yes. And it's like you get on board immediately. Yeah. And it's like this is great. <laughs> it's so great. It's so great. Yeah. She is very just like God, she's so sweet and, like, so genuinely bubbly and happy. Yeah. And, like, yes, I I feel very good. And then I'm like, oh, I got to work on some stuff yeah. to be that transparent <laughs> and amazing. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. She's I so— I felt the same way. Yeah. She's so great. Um, <laughs> show is written by Chris Kelly and Sarah Schneider. There you go. Um, uh, from SNL. Uh, That's uh, Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live, uh, New York City, greatest city in the world. Great city, great city in the world. Greatest city in the world. Um, you, know what place you can get real pizza. <clears throat> only place. <laughs> only place where they got the good wood fires. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think. Uh, no, or you're do, right. Or just like Ray's fire. famous pizza, they just cook it in that big regular oven, right? Yeah, I think it's a pizza oven. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know that it's. Yeah, it doesn't wh- have to be wood fire. I don't know what the. I mean, I guess I can sort of, I can, I can remember the difference between regu- like a regular New York slice and wood fire pizza. Right. Wood yes. fire pizza is a little more. It's a little crispier. And, yes. And you know, um, my fucking mouth is watering talking about pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but you just um, got on a napkin and put it into your palate. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize I was doing that. Yeah. You have a knife and fork. I'm banging them on the table. <laughs> um, my sister in law one time was talking about going to this. We were trying to decide, we were on vacation, we we're trying to decide where to eat. And she said, Well, this place has wood fire pizza. Um, I'd like to go there. And then in, over the course of the conversation, she said, the phrase wood fire pizza <laughs> so many times. Like, why? Just say pizza. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying wood fire pizza over yeah. and over again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, yeah, I guess it's special. It's special. It is very special. Well, it's like how the pioneers used to make pizza. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They, I, um, they put a stick in a raw pizza <laughs> mm-hmm. and then roast it over the fire. Is that how you do it? You put the stick uh-huh. in the pizza? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I do like I was I was at a restaurant the other night and I liked watching them. It was kind of you could see into the wood fire pizza area, uh-huh. and I did see a guy um, a couple times reach in and pop a couple of the crust bubbles. Not with his hand. No, 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 with like a little Jesus thing. Jesus Christ! Because <laughs> you were gesturing as if he was reaching. Right? With yeah, his yeah. Hand. I was. <laughs> Let me get that. I got it. Ow! I've been burnt so many times I can't feel it anymore. <laughs> I do feel like I burn myself. Not, I try to see. I anytime I'm uh, grilling something, mm. I do always just have like two or three times where I'm like, ah! <laughs> I don't know if it's like a. It makes you feel like you're really grilling. Yeah. If you test your skin, <laughs> <laughs> like oh no, I can just I can just flip the rest of this turkey burger well, with like my hand. If I'm making an omelet. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to see how it's firming up. So I'll just like dip my <laughs> fingers in there, palm olive style. <laughs> oh, it needs a few more minutes. Absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, but, but, wait, I got it. Hold on. Pizza. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 I don't got it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, so the guy, so you saw the guy pop yeah, the bubbles. And I That's just it. liked it. I, and I want, and that wasn't his only job, but I wanted it to be. Just like a guy with a long needle just being like, I don't worry. Richie, get over here. <laughs> oh, is it bubbling up? Yes, I got four <laughs> bubbles in there. Okay, sorry, sorry. I was using the restroom. I had to pop some of the toilet bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> not the alive ones, the scrubbing bubbles? No, 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 no. That can think and feel? No, 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 okay, not go. those. Um, there's a commercial that says that shows this guy having to walk a dog in the rain and wait there while the dog does its business uh-huh. under some like broken umbrella or something. It's like and the and the voiceover is 
would you wouldn't you rather be cleaning your toilet? <laughs> And it's that for the scrubbing bubbles, which when when I was a kid, I was for some reason I was I was fascinated by them. Yeah, by the bubble that had the bristles, and then it would talk. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was amazing. Um, Is that the brand scrubbing bubbles? I think it's called scrubbing bubbles. Okay. Yeah, and it and it, I don't know. I guess I'd still rather walk that dog in the rain. I don't, yeah. I don't get what they're trying to do. I know. I don't get if they're trying to say, like, obviously obviously, no one wants to clean a toilet. Right. Care. But they do make it. They're trying to make it look miserable to be walking the dog. But it's like, no, of course. Who no, wants I to? would much rather be walking yeah. my dog. Is this than... for people with OCD or something? Like, Yeah, I, I guess they do have to sit there and go, all right, we, we, you guys know the deal. We got to come up with a bunch of lists of things that are worse than, than every year we got to... Narrow this down. What's worse than cleaning the toilet? And it's just like a year long pitch meeting for that one commercial. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, you got to clean out that area, you know, behind the seat, in between the bowl and the seat. What's worse, guys? Uh, that butt dust. Getting stabbed in the throat. Okay, once again, Larry, we cannot show the violent, like, I we mean, can't show the violent Look, this is thing. a tall order, okay? <laughs> We've been at this for a year. I- <laughs> <laughs> Drew! Yeah. When does the show, when can people see the show? I think the show is going to premiere early 2019. Now you're basing this on... I don't really remember. Just a feeling you get. A feeling. No, I think they were like, at one point it was going to air in the fall, and then they were like, no, let's wait uh, until January because of uh, schedules, you know, like a schedule with other shows that are premiering. You don't think they're timing this that way because they're going to do something to Justin Bieber to get him, you know, in the news. So then to have the show premiere, it's like, is what a coincidence. We have a Bieber type on our show. And this is like, yeah, the funny- I think um, when I got when we got the call that it was from Comedy Central uh, f- that it was going to be pushed, there was like uh, on the other line, mm-hmm. a guy was like, uh, yeah, we're going to push it. And let's just say <laughs> it will line up perfectly with something in the news. And then he laughed for like three minutes and then hung up. <laughs> it is, so- that is Nana said, oh, all right. <laughs> yes. His nana excused himself halfway through his laugh. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Enough, CEO of Viacom. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take another break. Um, because I am in critical condition. <laughs> We're going to take a break. During the break, we will procure a location for our improv. And then when we come back, we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontane Nation returns. Hey everyone, it's Paul F. Tompkins, and I'm here with some ads for myself. Okay, Spontane Nation Live is happening on the road. First up, July 14th, Saturday, July 14th, we are headlining the We the People Improv Festival in my hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I am thrilled to be bringing the show to where I am from. We put a show on sale, sold out. We put a second show on sale. That one's almost sold out. You better get your tickets. We the People Improv Fest, Saturday, July 14th, Spontaneous Nation Live, Eugene Cordero, Tony Newsom, Little Janet Varney, and yes, Eben Schletter hitting that piano in person. You don't want to miss this. All right. Then we're going to be returning to the Detroit Improv Festival. I'm thrilled to be returning to that. I love Detroit. I love this festival. It's a great one. Uh, we're going to be at the Magic Bag Theater again. Uh, looks like tickets are not on sale as of this recording. The link will be coming soon, but save the date. If you're going to be in the area Thursday, August 9th, Detroit improv festival. Um, it's going to be Eugene, Tawny and little Janet again. And yes, I've been letter as well. And then something special coming in September. More on that later in other news, Los Angeles, 
come see two improv collectives that I am a part of. The Work Juice Players. These are all the people that did improv in the Thrilling Adventure Hour cast, the, the legendary Thrilling Adventure Hour, um, and a lot of the people that you know from this show. And also Bajillion Dollar Properties. All the, the cast of that, we're doing live shows in Los Angeles for the Bajillionaires. We're going to be at UCB Franklin, here in Los Angeles. Um, we're gonna be the third Tuesday of every month. That'll be June through November. Um, first show is uh, Tuesday, June 19th. Um, and then Work Juice Improv, that's gonna be uh, the last Wednesday of the month starting in July for three months. Um, so yeah, 20, tw July 25th, July 25th, the work juice players at dynasty typewriter. Very excited. I have not performed there yet. This will be my first time really looking forward to it. Please. For all of these shows, I beg of you to go to paulftompkinscom slash live, and you can find more information there. You know that I love you. Get, get that, get that water in. Oh yeah. Folks, we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, we have procured a location for our improv from, oh, what's his title? What's Matt's title? Do we know? Production coordinator. Production coordinator. From production coordinator, Matt. I'm sure I'll hear about it later if I'm wrong. And we are ready to begin our improv. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say... We, want, we need to go to the past for some reason. Someone's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. Anytime we travel to the past, we use this flashback sound effect. But you can't stay in the past forever, folks. Let's say you got to get back in time. We want to return from the flashback back to where we were. Or anytime we go into the future, we use this flash forward sound effect. Now. This final sound moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We want to find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else, moving only in space, not in time. We use this meanwhile sound effect. Past. Present. Future. Everyone gets it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to reveal the location for improv provided to us by production coordinator Matt. That location is Downey, California. Downey, California. We take you now to Downey, California. What time's this uh, train due in anyway? Well, um, I thought it was going to be here at 10:55. Well, it's 10:54 now. I guess we gotta. We don't have to be mad yet. We're all. Right. No, I mean, if I feel like I'd like to hear like just a little rumbling of the track or agree just a you. train whistle, just a little bit distant. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, but you know, we're running late. You know, maybe somebody got. I don't want to say stuck in the door. Over in Pasadena at the last stop, but. You say Man. it very, I mean, that's a very specific example. I guess it was, I haven't, uh, I don't know anything about what's happening on this train that's headed to us, if that's what you're getting at. I mean, I'm just saying, uh, I was wondering why we hadn't heard the rumble on the tracks or a distant train whistle, and you said maybe somebody got stuck in the door in Pasadena. <laughs> I get that that was a little bit specific, it's very but it specific. could have been anything. It's just the first thing that came to my mind. Maybe somebody uh, put them in the door and had them stick. Okay, I thought you were going to come up with a completely different example, but you just reworded your original. I seem to have scenario. added a more specific detail to that original story you when I should have did. focused on maybe there was a... Uh, disagreement between the two people and one of them stuck the other one in the door and then ran off. Uh, is that your uh, is that your suitcase there? Yeah, this is mine. With yeah. the monogram on it? Mm-hmm. 
And I take it your name is Anus. <laughs> no, those are my initials. <laughs> what what's what's it stand for? Well, uh, my first name is Albert. Okay. Uh, my middle name is Sam. Okay. And my last name is Nesbit. Umbrella with a oh, hyphen in between. I see. So it's the classic monogram. It's the classic. The, right, right, right. And so, what's what's your last name again? <laughs> Nesbit hyphen umbrella. Nesbit umbrella. Albert Sam Nesbit umbrella. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. You uh, you live here in Downey? I do not. I am returning to Big Sur. <laughs> I was, oh, okay, so <laughs> you don't live in Downey, no, but you are returning to Big Sur. That is correct. I I've been here on business. I see, I and see. now I am catching the train here, headed back up to my children and wife up in Big Sur. Oh, how many children do you? Have? I have three children. And what are their uh, names? <laughs> Marie. Sure. Tommy and Bart. Marie, Tommy, and Bart, Nesbitt Umbrella. <laughs> yep. Marie Nesbitt Umbrella is my oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. How old is she? She's 17. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, I have a three-year-old and a two-year-old. <laughs> Are these all the same uh, same mother? Same mother. Okay. Same mother. So a bit of a surprise. Bit of a Why not let's have another one? Yeah. Yeah, the third, the second one, big surprise. Sure. Uh, so we knew we planned the first one, right? And then uh, late into our marriage, big surprise, followed it up with another one, just to, just to you know, absolutely not have two on the on the either ends of school. So for, so first there's Marie, yes. she's seventeen now, and then who came? Uh, then we got Tommy. Tommy. Tommy Nesbitt Umbrella. Tommy Nesbitt Umbrella. And then, and little then Bart. Bart. Little Bart. Right. Yeah. So we got two young boys and a girl getting ready to go to college. I know, right? Mm -hmm. do, do they all get along, the kids? They do, yes. Yeah. They're they're good kids. They um you know, there's quite an age gap. Um but but what about you? Are you from Downey? Are you coming here for business or pleasure? I am uh I'm well, I don't I don't suppose you'd be Arriving here, waiting for the train. <laughs> you wouldn't still be here. You would have gone and done your stuff. Well, it's a funny story. Um, I, I am from Downey. You are. But I don't live here anymore. Oh, okay. I actually live in Big Sur. <laughs> really? Yes. And I was coming here to, to bury my grandmother. Oh. Grandfather. I'm sorry. Your grandmother's right, name is... Thank you for your condolences. Oh, what? Oh, no. Well, no, I am sorry. <laughs> thank you. And condolences. Um, but you your grandmother's that. name is Grandfather? She insisted on being called Grandfather. That is very interesting. She didn't want anyone to screw it up. So she wanted to know. It was sort of a test. Like, you know how uh, Van Halen and their rider, they put, we don't want any green M&Ms? Yeah, that was that of was of course famous story. Yeah, that was so. Then when they would get to their uh, their dressing room, mm -hmm. and they would see no green M and M's. They knew, oh, they've read the they rider. Read the rider. So this was so. <laughs> if you called her grandmother, she'd know you weren't really paying attention. You right. didn't know who she was. Right. But if you called her grandfather, she's like, all right, well, you have all the benefits of being my grandchild. I see. That's very smart. And was she a performing artist? Was no, she, a, she sure wasn't. She was, she was just a regular old grandmother okay. called grandfather. grandfather. I see. I yeah. see. Are you guys, uh, uh, is the funeral going to take place up at the gardens? Yes, it is. The okay. funeral will be taking place up the old... Downy Gardens. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, and um, I just have to, I just have to make sure because some I, I'm waiting for someone that's coming in on the 1055 train, which by the uh, way is now officially late. Officially, it is late. Yeah. It is late. Yeah. Um, well, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I could come. Um, if you're looking. 
for for people to hang out with. Well, I mean, I was waiting for this person on the train. It was my my cousin James, but uh, mm-hmm. this train is so late. I, I, I mean, I wonder what I wonder what is keeping the train. Everyone, keep calm. Ow. Keep calm. Ow. Someone was Ouch. placed in the door. Oh, my God. So we're going to be stuck here in Pasadena Carol for just put, a little longer. Me and Carol were having a disagreement, and she pushed me right into the doors as it was closing. Carol, is this true? Yes. Yeah, I did it. Whatever. Glenda deserved it. Glenda deserved it. I'm sorry. Is, is the train going to be much delayed much longer? Because I do have to get to Downey. I, I have to go to my my grandmother grandfather's funeral. Oh, you lost both of them? I'm oh, so sorry. Oh, this again. Why don't I phrase it differently? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you're looking for I mean, seat I have... fillers or... <laughs> <laughs> well, this is being recorded. Um, you know, my parents decided... <laughs> We should get video of this because uh, it'll be more memorable that way. That's you know, true. In case anybody ever asks us what was the saddest moment of your life, <laughs> then we'll. Uh, this will be the, the you'll saddest be to, for sure. Because yeah, we'll have video. You you'll know. have to see. Yeah, I I get that. Sometimes I don't remember anything that happened in my life, and I have to rewatch it on video <laughs> in order to remember. I think. I I think my short term memory is okay but my long my midterm and long term maybe not so good there's an area in the middle that yeah. completely goes people never talk about that your midterm memory mid-term. there's short term there's long term and then there's midterm where you're just remembering stuff from a couple months ago yeah yeah i have no midterm memory <laughs> um but you know I, I i mean i was i personally the last funeral i went to uh my good buddy a uh, dick hole. <laughs> Was that his name or were those initials? Uh, those were his initials. <laughs> so if it was a monogram, little d, big I C K H O L, little e. So his first name began with a D. Yeah, first name Doug. Middle name began with an E. Yes, Edgar. Edgar. So Doug Edgar <laughs> Ick Hall. Well, that's or that's that's a this, is a, this is a long hyphenated name. <laughs> yes. Okay. Igloo cat. Igloo cat. Igloo cat kit. Igloo cat. As kit. in the Kit Kat bar. Igloo cat kit. <laughs> but but regular cat. cat C. Cat like a regular cat. Yeah. Igloo kit. cat kit. Kit like Kit Kat bar. Yeah. <laughs> Igloo cat kit. Henry Olga Lioness. Ooh, Lioness. Like L I O N E S S. Did he. Was he in the Air Force by any chance? <laughs> he was. Do you know Dick Hole? <laughs> I mean, I was in the Air Force for many years. We, we, you look familiar. You're from Big Sur. I'm from Big Sur. Well, I'm from Downey. Don't forget. Right, but I live. But you in live Big in Big Sur. Sur. Well, well, I, I feel like it's I'm, a pretty I'm small. I'm stationed in Big Sur at the Air Force Base. Oh, you there. are. Yeah. Okay, that is a beautiful base, by the it's, way. I don't know how we got so lucky, but it's so uh, lucky. I love, I love being on the base. It is. I, got, I love that rustic PX we got, <laughs> where it looks like a lodge. <laughs> yeah. Go there to buy your cigarettes. Yeah, you guys, um, big part of your program is uh, taking mushrooms out there and thinking about your life, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's unusual. It's unusual. It doesn't happen a lot on uh, on Air Force bases, but certainly at the Big Sur Air Force Base. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, the Army in general should put more uh, importance on self-realization. Yeah, well, you know, they, they used to, uh, when I was a young cadet— uh, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, psychedelic drugs were a big part of, uh... Now listen up! You've all taken your molly? Sir, yes, sir! It's been 25 minutes. How are you feeling? Sir! 
permission to speak to your beautiful face. Permission granted. Sir, I am feeling like I could just hug you right now. So hard right now, sir. Cadet, you are sweating. <sighs> Woo. Sir, I apologize, sir. This molly is just kicking in real hard, sir. Cadet, have yourself a bottle of water and grab that pacifier. Thank you, sir. <sighs> you Woo. there. What is your problem? <laughs> sir, sorry. I just... These... Leaves were so beautiful, I just wanted to bury myself in them, sir. <laughs> can you see my nose sticking out, sir? Yes, I can, Cadet. Very well done. You've passed my test. Oh, this was a test? Was it? I... <laughs> well, then, uh... I mean, what, what, what shall I call you? Oh, uh... You can call me... Anus. anus. <laughs> just call me Anus. All right, Anus. Uh, yeah, if you would, uh, I'll just hopefully hear from my cousin James at some point. But uh, if you will accompany me to the funeral and, and just make sure it looks like a, a good turnout, I'd appreciate it. I can call up a couple of my business associates here. Um, oh, really? Yeah, they would. They wouldn't mind heading over. Oh, well, that um, would be wonderful. I mean, it's just. Um, you don't meet, but funerals are usually filled with people you know or loved. Right. And uh, people that the deceased knew and respected and Correct. had stories with. But a lot of times it is a nice place to meet new people. Well, you know, uh, in the old days, the cemetery used to be a place where people would uh, they'd hang out and have picnics and such. Is that true? I believe, uh, yes, I believe I've been told that. Wow. Yeah, I mean, nothing like uh, throwing out the old blanket over someone's grave, <laughs> sitting down and dropping a bunch of meat from a sandwich all over the top of it. Out of I respect. pack my sandwiches a little too heavy <laughs> you, you on might the meat. Want, you might want to tighten those up a little bit. I don't know if you can tell. I, oh, found some roast beef here in my kerchief pocket. Oh, I thought that was a pocket square. Nope. <laughs> It was right it's there in, perfectly in folded your up. Chief pocket, rare roast beef. <laughs> it's a beautiful iridescent color. It must have been in there for a while. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, did you say that uh, you find that uh, funerals are a sort of social uh, occasion? Well, you know, I mean, different uh, different people celebrate death different ways, or celebrate or mourn different ways. Right. Most people mourn death, I find. <laughs> but you're saying there's some people that celebrate. Some death. people celebrate death, you know. Uh, Let me ask you this, Anus. Mm-hmm. Have you, ever, uh, have you ever fallen in love at a funeral? Well, I mean, that's how I met my wife. Mm, okay. You know, it was a very famous uh, test. Mm-hmm. <laughs> To determine, uh, you know, if you're a certain type of person, and uh, it involves this funeral scenario mm -hmm. where some, is this uh, a psychopath test? Oh, is it? Um, I don't know. I don't remember if I heard that it was a psychopath test. I think it was just a, just like a personality quiz. Oh, okay, okay. As long as you're not calling me a psychopath. Uh, no, certainly not, Anus. All right. <laughs> so who? Who are these uh, these associates you were going to invite? Well, I work in the banking industry, uh -huh. and um, you know, I there's a couple of other board members from the bank I was up here to oversee. Are you a bank board member? I'm a bank board member oh. here of the Seacrest Bank. <laughs> well, down these famous Seacrest Bank has been it's just recently been bought by. Uh, by some conglomerate. Do you do you work for that conglomerate? No, uh, no. Uh, I was I sold to the conglomerate. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So you must have made uh, quite a tidy sum. Well, uh, you know, I did all right. You know, as in part of the I industry, uh, I started the Seacrest Bank, and when you sell off to Wachovia, you tend to do pretty well. Can I ask you this? I'm not in the banking industry myself, mm -hmm. but. Do you think the name Wachovia, do you think the the way it looks, they want people 
to pronounce it in their minds as watch over you. Like, mm -hmm. we watch over your money. Because <laughs> that's what I think every time I see it. Is that on purpose? That is, that is, you're very cunning, sir, because that is so on purpose. In fact, every bank has a little meaning like that. Really? Chase Bank. Uh -huh. Chase Bank will chase after your money. Where's it going? <laughs> that doesn't sound very reassuring. If it's it's kind of like the FDIC. Um, they, they are cha they'll chase after your money if <laughs> if it gets stolen. You see? <laughs> Why did they call themselves Kisaftia? <laughs> they should have called it Kisaftia, but Wachovia was already a thing, so they just went chase. Uh, we'll chase after your money, we'll chase right. bank. Right, right. What's another one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, there's many. There's many, um, well, uh, let's see. <laughs> One other bank. Now I've got plenty of time. The funeral is not until not 6 Not for a p. while? Okay, yeah. it looks like the train. I don't hear any whistles or anything. I wonder if they got the person out of that door. Ow! Please, ma'am. Glenda! Please, please stop screaming. I did not burn the casserole. I did not. Yes, you did. Yes, you did, are bitch. You, are you ladies really fighting over a casserole? I have to get there to my grandmother, grandfather's funeral. G oh, both of them? You already asked me that. <laughs> okay. Wasn't that... Uh, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. It did. The Thank third you. bank. Thank you for that, that third And that was the best one. That was the best one. I'll never forget it. <laughs> All right, well... uh Let's uh, let's proceed to the funeral. All know. right. Okay. Oh my! Oh, Pretty. Oh, oh, look who is here! Look who's here! It's it's my my dear grand grandson. What's his name again? You there, stranger? What is my grandson's name that you're standing next to? Did I don't think he ever told me. It's <laughs> it's Captain Adirondack <laughs> of the Big Sur Air Force. That's right. That's right. Oh, Captain, my Captain, I'm so glad <laughs> that you're home here in Downey. My, my wife, my wife, she's gone. Grandfather is gone. Oh, and. Uh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Now. Thank my, you for my, the condolence. My name is uh, Albert. You can just call me Anus. What? <laughs> just call me Anus. Can I call you Albert, or is this a, a deal breaker? <laughs> <laughs> well, I really wish you'd call me Anus. Just please, Pip, just call him what he wants to be called. I'm so sorry for your loss. Uh, you. Grandfather was a... Great woman, I'm oh, told. Grandfather was the love of my life. And what's what's your name? My, I, what what's what do they call me? What did I want to be called? <laughs> what did what did you want to be called? And then tell me what the, what do they call you? I wanted to be called Poseidon. I wanted the little <laughs> grandchildren to call me Poseidon. The <laughs> because you because you the yeah you love the ocean. Well, I have a long beard and I'm frequently wet. <laughs> I don't believe in umbrellas. Oh my God, well, that's actually half of my last name. Umbrella? Yeah. What's the full last name? Oh, what was it? Uh, in you. It wasn't Nesbitt Umbrella. Nesbitt Umbrella. Nesbitt Umbrella. Do you know my family? Are oh, you? I know of them. They're, well, they're the people that own the Downey Bank and they, they shut down the farm here. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm very sorry to do that, uh, Poseidon, but... The They'll call me Pip. That's what everybody calls Pip, me. Pip, sorry. But Pip, I'm very, I was very sorry to do that, but we had to call your loans. I mean, you had too much money. You had borrowed too much money, and we had to call your loans because Wachovia, excuse me, Wachovia money was knocking on our door. But you just... 
You gave me the money. I mean, why couldn't you stop the lo- if When I kept asking for more money, why didn't you say no? Well, we were a small town. Yes, and so I'll need an additional, let's call it $30 million. Oh, let's call it. Yeah, for my farm. Uh, okay, well, um, listen, Pip, uh, we would love to do this uh, for you here. Um, I'm just wondering, what are you growing again? Can you tell me a little bit more about it's the farm? It's an ant farm. And- <laughs> But it's going to be the biggest one ever. Okay, uh, I I would love to loan you the money. It's just uh, I'm a little unsure of how ant farms turn a profit. Seems to me like they're just a weird little nasty smelly thing in a kid's bedroom. Well, that's a typical ant farm. This, of course, will be an amazing cosmopolitan ant farm with all kinds of views. (laughs) (laughs) So this is a tourist attraction. Absolutely. Okay, so you... People come to Downey for the train, but they don't realize there could be so much more. Okay, so you're going to want people to climb up on top of this ant farm? No, they can't do that. It's dangerous. (laughs) They're just going to look at it. It's super sandy. (laughs) It's super sandy. Doesn't give any footing. Well, they can't get trapped behind glass because the ants would tear them apart. That's true. Now, are these big ants or regular size ants? Well, if I get my $30 million, they could be very big ants indeed. Oh, so this is going to also go to genetically engineering big ants? Uh, You didn't hear that from me, but yes. And uh, I know this is a dumb question, but we're talking about the insect, not the family member, right? Oh, I I think I've misunderstood what an ant farm is this whole time. (laughs) And I never Uh, got to realize my dream. Well, unfortunately, that officer that loaned you the money was a little bit lax on his uh, restrictions, and he loaned you money so you could round up a... Bunch of brothers, older brothers, sisters. That's right, older brothers, sisters. <laughs> no, that was the sister farm. Your older brother's <laughs> sister is still your sister. Your, how does an aunt work? It's, your it's daddy's, your, parents your daddy's sister. That's right, that's right. Or mommy's sister. Mommy's sister. And you know that was a bad idea, Pip. Well, how do I know I never got to do it? So in my mind, it's still a very good idea. Well, All right, Pip, that's you. That's enough. You go uh, go have a roast. You're soaking drink. wet. <laughs> <laughs> go dry off, Pip. It's not even raining. I don't know how. I'll, I'll, please, I'll talk to Pip that way. You... I'm sorry. I seem to overstep my You're balance. here as a guest, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Uh Pretty tough turnout here. Yeah, well, grandmother was not, uh, grandfather was not very well liked. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you're going to be sorrier to hear that uh, this was all a setup. I'm sorry. Anus, (laughs) it's no (laughs) coincidence. It's no coincidence that I happened to beat you at the Down A train station. I know exactly who you are and what you've done to my family. So this whole funeral here is a ruse. I guess there's no one in this casket? Oh, no, there is. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. That was not supposed to be an open casket. This was just a coincidence. Jesus. Like, we use this to... Oh, my God. Yeah, will you see what happens? I am so sorry for showing grandfather's mangled body. I thought she maybe died of old age. No, she... She died in the experimental ant farm. (laughs) Looks like she was trampled by a lot of sensible... Kitten heels. It could have worked. <laughs> Pip, that's enough. Pip. Now, Enos. Well, what do you plan on doing to me, sir? There's I... certainly nothing you can do, because watch over your money. The deal is closed. That deal is closed. But I'm proposing a new deal to you. A deal whereby my family murders you to death. <laughs> well, what's in it for me? <laughs> I don't think you understand. <laughs> this doesn't sound like a deal I no, want to shake hands I wasn't, on. I wasn't being literal that it's a deal. It was that we're going to... Here's we're gonna, what I'll uh, give you. Yeah, sure. You get to beat the shit out of me. <laughs> to my life's edge. 
But what you will give me is 10% stake in your newest venture. The Rutabaga Farm. How did you know about that? Well, a lot of stuff comes across my desk at the bank, and I know about your new idea, the Rutabaga Farm. Mm. I'll tell you what, Anus. I will give you that 10% in exchange for a vicious, savage beating. <laughs> Beat the shit out you of me. You will never fully recover from it. <laughs> You'll be ambulatory, but just about. And people will wonder what happened to you. Because <laughs> they'll know it wasn't like you weren't born that way. They'll know like you went through something. They'll know. Yeah. In exchange for complete funding of this rutabaga farm. Which, by the way, <laughs> just so we're on the same page. What is it? It's a farm where people can be rude to Lou Baker, <laughs> the composer of Mambo Number no. 5. I seen it, and I love the idea. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody leave me alone. Don't give me high five. You know? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not what I was supposed to say. Can we start the beating now? Yeah, what do you say? I was trying to quote what Lou Bega sings at this rutabaga farm when he wants, when people, when he's trying to rile people up to be rude for them, well, to I, him. We assume that people would travel to the farm because they were ready to be rude they to are, him. He just, they're already so mad about Mambo number five. Yes. That they come. They, they say things to him like, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm sorry, Lubega's alive. <laughs> That's what I was doing. That's what, that, that was it. All right, so, um, do we have a deal? Well, I'm thinking about my three kids right now. And Remember, we, the first offer is we're going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I guess I... This is the final negotiation. Well, <laughs> it's either this or go back to being killed. I mean, this was your counteroffer was <laughs> to invest in the root to You're right. Farm. I guess there's no more negotiation. <laughs> so shall, shall we shake on it? All right. We're shaking on it. We're shaking on it. Well, Anus, this looks like the beginning of a beautiful partnership. It does. And I guess I'll take it right here on the kisser. Here we go. <laughs> Pip, you got the first swing. No, oh, I can't wait. And it all happened in a place called Spontanea Nation. True! Oh! Where can people find you online? And what do you want to tell people about? This comes out June 4th. Uh, at Drew Tarver on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and guys, just uh, listen to... The, the season of Teacher's Lounge that's out. Just listen to Just it, Just listen to it. It's so fun. It's I love the Teacher's Lounge podcast. It is one Thank of my you. favorites. Uh, consistently LOL. We love having you on. And, Except uh, for this last season. <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, that's okay. Oh, my God. No, I think that was true. Love maybe is too strong a term. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. It's... <laughs> I'm going to think about this for the rest of the I, day. I am. I am thrilled. Anytime I get to be, I, I get to be asked to to join you guys. It's always so much fun. It's such a great group of people. Thank you. And thank the you. podcast is hilarious. Thank you so much. Thank of you. Of course. Thanks where, for having me. Where can people find you online? Uh, at your Tarver. Okay. And live shows. Live shows. Are you going to be doing stuff in New York? Yeah, I probably will like hop on some UCB shows in New York. So look out for that. But uh, nothing. Nothing really. You know. Every Friday at UCB uh, in LA, I'll be back in July at some point. So there you check go. that out. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> and also Madison Square Garden. Madison August Square Garden. 12, it is. Oh, the theater awesome. at the garden. And also, I'm. This is me giving oh, myself a date. <laughs> I'm giving myself a date so oh, I can like, prepare like something. Like the Drew Carey check. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The Drew Carey check. Drew Carey. <laughs> no, Drew Carey check. 
Drew Carey wrote himself a check that said, "Yeah, he said you will be the host. One hundred million dollars for." And then the memo it said, "Hosting price is right." <laughs> yes. Folks, Evan Schletter. He is Evan Schletter on all the things. Go to EvanSchletter.com and see God Evan Schletter's non-spontaneous news and work. Because Evan Schletter's only the first. <laughs> How do you spell Evan Schletter? It's simple, stupid. It goes like this. Hang on. E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. As for me. Go to PaulFTompkins.com slash live to find out if I'm going to be anywhere in your immediate vicinity. Let me tell you what. June, uh, no, July 14th, Spontane Nation live at the We The People Improv Festival in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's right. I'm returning to my ancestral homeland with Spontane Nation for the very first time. Eben will be there. The Spontorco will be there. Eugene Cordero, Tony Newsom, and little Janet Varney. Uh, hopefully there'll be a ticket link by the time you hear this. But go to um, we the people fest.com. I don't know. Fi- find it. We the people improv fest. Look for it that way. That's how I found it. Um, I am PF Tompkins on all the things. Follow me if you dare. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in Presenti!